let us discuss about the CMOS inverter. So we know that an inverter is the circuit which always gives the complemented output of the given input. So the CMOS inverter is a very important part of all the digital designs. Once if the operational properties are clearly understood, complex structures like NAND gates, adders, multipliers and multi microprocess can be easily done. And the electrical behavior of these complex circuits can be almost completely derived from the results obtained from an inverter. Now, here you can see an inverter that is CMOS inverter, complementary metal oxide semiconductor inverter, which has one PMOS as well as NMOS. And the input, uh, the input whatever we are given is a common input for your both pull up and pull down network. So, if I give the input as zero, automatically my output should become F1. And if I give the input as a uh, one the automatically the output should be equals to a zero and you can see the similar structure of the CMOS inverter here let us first uh, see how <coughs> the uh, characteristics of your CMOS inverter vary when we are giving a low input to the high input and how it operates in different regions so now coming to the working of your CMOS inverter as we know that if the input is high, the lower NMOS device closes to discharge the capacitive load. Means whenever I give the input as zero, the NMOS is in the off condition because my NMOS will be only active or will become on when the input voltage is greater than the threshold voltage. And uh, so that's why when the input is low, this will be in the off condition. And complement to this NMOS, when the input is low, my PMOS will be in the on condition. and here, whatever the VDD, when uh, the PMOS is connected to VDD, the, when this PMOS is on, automatically the VDD will be supplied to the output uh, and the capacitor will get charged and the output will be 1. So, so close to the discharge the capacitor loop. <coughs> so now, if the input is high, the lower NMOS device closes and discharges capacitor load. That's what we are seeing. So if the input is high, what is happening is this will become on and this will become off and this will become an open circuit and uh, the NMOS device when it closes it uh, acts like a sink and the capacitor which is already charged will be discharging to the ground and automatically you will be having an output of zero. Similarly if the input is low the top PMOS device is turned on and the charging the capacitive load and a maximum output will be present at the output side. At no time both the devices are on which prevents the DC current flowing from the positive power supply to the ground. So when both the transistors are in on condition, what is happening is the DC current flowing from the positive, uh, positive power supply to the ground is uh, prevented and this circuit acts like a switch circuit since the P channel transistor has exactly opposite characteristics of your N transistor. So that's why they are called as complementary metal oxide semiconductor transistors or CMOS transistor. In the transition region, both the transistors are in saturation and the circuit operates with a large voltage gain. Means when, uh, when the transistors, when the CMOS inverter is in the saturation region, it will be exhibiting a maximum gain. Now let us uh, see what happens in uh, region wise. Now if you see the CMOS uh, transfer characteristics, now considering the static condition, so see that in the region 1 for which V in is equals to logic 0 that means when my input is equals to logic 0 uh, we have a P transistor fully turned on and uh, N transistor which is off. So what happening? what is happening is there is no current flows through the inverter and the output is directly connected to VDD through the P transistor. Now that is what uh, we are seeing here when P transistor is on. When the P transistor is on, directly the VDD is connected to the output and capacitor will get charged and you will be getting a maximum output. And when NMOS is off, this will be an open circuit. So that's why in region 1, so in that condition, the P will be on means the output will be the maximum voltage. And hence the output voltage is logic 1. Now, uh, as when we were moving, when we increase the input voltage, that is what uh, we are going to see in the region 5. So region 5 what it says is like when V in is equals to logic 1 the N transistor is fully on while the P transistor is fully off so no current flows and a logic 0 appears at the output side that's what uh, at your region so in the region 5 when V in is equals to logic 1 and the N transistor is fully on while the P transistor is fully off 
so no current flows and a logic 0 will be appearing at the output side so here in region 5 if you see the region 5 the n is on and p is off so what is happening here is when p is off this is open circuit when there is an open circuit there is no VDD flowing to the output side as n is on this n is a closed circuit so as it is connected to the ground this acts as a sink and the capacitor will get discharged and a minimum value will be appearing at the output side now coming to region 2 the input voltage has increased to a level which just exceeds the threshold voltage of the end transistor the transistor the end transistor conducts and has a large voltage between the source and drain so it is in saturation so now i am increasing the voltage on the x axis that is greater than your uh, threshold voltage so this is your vtn so i am increasing then at the time my end transistor is uh, into the saturation region so it uh, conducts with a large voltage so a large voltage between the source and drain so it is in saturation the p transistor is also conducting but with only a small voltage across it and it operates in the unsaturated or resistive region a small current uh, now flows through the inverter from vdd to vss so here when even my p transistor is on in this condition but a small current is flowing from your vdd to ground so both the transistors are on but my nmos transistor is in saturation region and pmos transistor is in the resistive uh, region now coming to region uh, now coming to the region 4 it is similar to the region 2 but with the roles of p and n transistors are reversed however the current magnitude in region 2 and 4 are are small and most of the energy consumed in switching from one state to other state due to the large current which flows in region 3 so now what is happening is now if you take the region 2 here and uh, now region 4 in region 4 the pmos transistor will be in the saturation region and nmos transistor will be in the resistive region so due to the switching operation to switching from one state to other state is due to large current which flows in the region 3 so energy will get consumed a small or small and most of the energy is getting consumed in switching operation only so now coming to your uh, region 3 so region 3 is a place where both the pmos and nmos transistors are in saturation so what happens let us see when uh, pmos and nmos are in saturation so in this region in which the inverter exhibits gain and in which both the transistors are in saturation the current in each device must be same since the transistors are in series so we can write the equation like this the current in your pmos transistor is equal to the current which is flowing in your nmos transistor so as both are in saturation we know the equation for your current in your pmos transistor is i dsp is equals to beta p by 2 into vn minus vdd minus vtp whole square that is vn minus vdd minus vtp whole square this is the equation for saturation current in pmos transistor and uh, when the nmos transistor in such sat saturation that is idsn is equals to beta n by 2 into vn minus vtn we don't have any vdd here so we are excluding the threshold voltage in saturation that is vn minus the threshold voltage here also vn minus the threshold voltage of your nmos transistor as the threshold voltage is a minimum voltage which is required to make uh, uh, to conduct uh, the channel in your nmos and pmos transistor so as they are in saturation we need to uh, subtract the th threshold voltage since both the transistors are in saturation they act as a current source so that the equivalent circuit in this region is two current sources in series between vdd and vss so what it says is my circuit this is on pmos is on and nmos is on simply it is just connecting the vtd and vss and it will be exhibiting a maximum gain in the region 3 so thank you for more lectures subscribe to our channel uh, if you like the video please share the video thank you